This is part two of the session on um, Oracle Functions. Hi, my name is KD. I'm part of the product team in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. In the first part of this session, we uh, looked at what are uh, serverless uh, compute options or functions as a service uh, offerings. We looked at the open source FN project on which the Oracle Functions service is based. We looked at uh, an overview of the service as well as some of the key features of this uh, uh, service. So let's start this session by getting into the uh, core concepts uh, for Oracle Functions service. Uh, and then we'll get into IAM services. And then we will actually look under the hood on uh, how we what happens when you deploy a function and then what happens when you invoke a function. Um, we will have a third part of this session in which we will uh, get into the uh, use cases and an actual demo. I'm going to skip the first few slides because these were covered in part one. I would encourage you to uh, look at part one for uh, some nice background on the topic. But uh, let's start with uh, the first core concept in functions, which is called uh, applications. An application is essentially a, a logical grouping of functions. Uh, you can create an application in OCI console in the Oracle function section. I'll, I'll quickly show you that. And you do that uh, before you can deploy any function. Uh, an application does not need to contain any function, but it's just a, a logical grouping of, uh, of functions. Why it is important is because it uh, provides a common context to store the configuration variables that are available to use for all the functions in, a, in an application. So let's say you have an application, you have uh, multiple functions in it, uh, all the configuration variable uh, variables in the application would provide the shared context that can be leveraged uh, by these different functions. Uh, you can create uh, applications using the console. We'll look at that. But you can also create it uh, using the FN project uh, CLI. Uh, and uh, you can also use the OCI API to do that. Let's uh, look at uh, uh, what the interface looks like from OCI console. So I've logged into the console. Uh, functions are part of the developer services uh, option. Yeah, and then I click at functions. You choose the right compartment that you want to work in. Uh, you see an example application already there, but you can create a new application. Uh, you can um, say, Uh, you, can, you have to choose uh, uh, the uh, compartment in which you want to use it. Uh, you then uh, need to specify uh, the subnets in your VCN where you want to uh, create the application. Uh, this is important because when functions are created in an application, they are able to leverage other OCI resources in the same uh, subnet, so uh, set it up properly. Uh, you uh, can choose other options, but then you can just uh, uh, create an application like that. Once an application is uh, created, uh, you can uh, then get into uh, creating uh, functions. Um, and functions are nothing but uh, uh, blocks of code that you write. Uh, you can use any language, uh, but there is first class support for five of uh, these languages, uh, Java, Python, Go, uh, Ruby and Node.js. Uh, these blocks of code that you write uh, generally do one simple thing uh, very well. And uh, these are uh, typically designed to be more microservices oriented, uh, not part of monolith. So do one thing, do it well, and do one simple thing. Uh, these uh, Functions are invoked in response to either a CLI command or uh, uh, the functions themselves expose uh, an HTTP endpoint. You can invoke the function using that uh, HTTP endpoint. Uh, you can invoke uh, uh, them through uh, external events or through OCI events and using SDKs as well. Uh, 
and the uh, uh, functions are deployed as containers uh, themselves. So uh, a definition of the container, of, uh, sorry, the, when you create a function, the definition of the function is stored as metadata in the Oracle Functions service. Uh, the definition uh, is going to describe how the function is to be executed. Uh, it has to include, we'll look into uh, all of this in detail shortly, but in, you need to include the uh, Docker image in a specified Docker registry, uh, which which is pulled when the function is invoked. This Docker registry could be anywhere. Where you can also leverage the OCI or the registry service within OCI. Uh, you also need to specify the maximum length of time the function is allowed to execute and the maximum amount of memory the function is allowed to uh, consume. Then there is the notion of uh, invocations, uh, you know, in, in Oracle functions, uh, the function is, the function code is uh, executed uh, when the function is invoked uh, and the invocations can happen uh, using the FN project CLI, like we discussed, using the SDKs, using the, uh, uh, the, uh, OCI event uh, service can invoke it, it can trigger it. And uh, finally, as I was saying, you know, every function automatically gets an HTTP endpoint. Uh, you can have signed HTTP, uh, HTTP requests to, uh, to this function's uh, invoke endpoint. Um, the, uh, when the function is invoked uh, for the very first time, uh, the uh, function's uh, service is going to uh, pull the Docker image from uh, the registry that you have specified and uh, run it as a Docker container. Uh, and uh, and if there are, you know, then uh, the system manages the orchestration of when the, uh, you know, if the container is not being used, whether to retire it. But if the container is still there and uh, uh, there is uh, another request to the same function, uh, the uh, the Oracle function service is going to direct those requests to the same container, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, when when there is an idle period, uh, the container itself is, is removed, but you don't have to care about any of that. It is all managed by uh, the service itself. All you care about is uh, uh, writing the code and deploying it as a function and telling the service when to, when to invoke it. And we also, uh, looked at uh, uh, triggers. Uh, you know, triggers are essentially. Uh, it means that you know the uh, there is some action in the system uh, that uh, sends a request to invoke uh, a, a function that you have uh, specified uh, using Oracle functions. Uh, the uh, the trigger event could be something in the OCI event service, uh, or you can also. Uh, using um, the HTTPS endpoints, uh, also uh, trigger a function using, uh, uh, you know, uh, a defined time-based uh, uh, schedule as well. Uh, a function, uh, you can associate these specific triggers to a function or you can have functions, uh, 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 you know, with more, more than one trigger or with no trigger, etc. So quick look at the uh, IAM policies required to work with functions. Uh, you would need to uh, write two, uh, at least two policies in the tenancies root compartment. Uh, and the uh, uh, you know, first one is about uh, the uh, reading the repositories where the Docker images are stored. And then, you know, uh, using the uh, virtual network uh, family in the compartment so that it can uh, leverage uh, the, uh, the VCN and subnets and its resources. If, uh, if you are not part of the administrator uh, group, uh, you can also uh, create a, a specific group of uh, functions users, and then you need to write um, a, a set of uh, policies uh, for that uh, group, uh, and you know, in this uh, slide, you see uh, 
an example of uh, of these uh, four policies that you need to write. But if you're a part of the admin group, you just need uh, these two. Um, so now let's uh, look under the hood uh, and see what happens when you are uh, deploying a function. Uh, when you uh, you say you write, uh, you have written the code for a function and it's ready to deploy. You can use uh, a single FN project CLI command uh, to perform all the deploy uh, operations in, in a sequence. Uh, we'll look at a demo. But you know what you essentially do end up doing is uh, uh, when deploying, you're building a Docker image from, uh, from the function. You are providing uh, a definition of the function in. Uh, uh, in a YAML uh, file, uh, uh, you know, that YAML file uh, includes some important configuration information, uh, including the maximum length of the time the function is allowed to execute and the maximum amount of uh, memory that can be allocated uh, by, uh, to this function. Uh, then there is uh, pushing the image to the specified Docker registry uh, for deployment. Uh, uploading the uh, function uh, metadata in the uh, in the YAML file and the link to the uh, Docker registry where uh, the uh, container is going to be uh, located. Uh, all of this uh, metadata is uploaded to the FN server, uh, which is uh, we'll see shortly what happens uh, during invocation. But you know all this information is now with the FN server during the deployment stage, and uh, uh, this function is then also added to the list of functions uh, that you have and it is then shown in the OCI console. All right, so we looked at deployment. Now let's see uh, what happens when you are invoking a function. Uh, as we discussed, uh, 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 a function in Oracle functions can be invoked uh, uh, through multiple uh, uh, methods uh, you can use the FN project uh, the command line interface the CLI uh, you can use the OCI SDKs that we provide uh, you can use uh, the uh, HTTP uh, invocation endpoint that each function has uh, or uh, you can use uh, uh, or OCI events uh, to invoke the functions as well uh, you know, let's say you're invoking the function and this is the first time, the Oracle function service would first verify the request with the IAM service. That's why we have all those IAM policies that we discussed. Uh, and uh, if the request passes uh, the authentication and authorization checks, uh, uh, the function service then passes the request to the FN uh, server. Uh, you know, all these uh, are, uh, uh, the invocation options uh, and and once uh, the, it is invoked, uh, the check goes to the IAM service, it passes the check and now it's up to the FN server to uh, to now uh, you know do uh, a few things. The first one is uh, uh, identify the docker image uh, to pull from the docker registry so it's going to uh, get the image and uh, you know uh, pull it and then execute the function by running the function's image as a container uh, on an instance uh, you know this is a vcn in the subnet that we looked at uh, uh, where you said you want to uh, run your functions uh, so the fn server is going to get the image and deploy it in a instance um, running in within this uh, uh, subnet uh, and this subnet is associated with the application to which the function belongs. Uh, when the function is executing inside the container, uh, the function can read and write from uh, other resources and services running in the same subnet. For example, it, it can access the database as a service within the same subnet. Uh, it can also read and write uh, from other shared resources uh, in OCI, for example, from object storage, so it's very well integrated in the OCI ecosystem. Uh, you can specify, you know, or you have specified, uh, optionally, the length of time the function is allowed to execute uh, by setting a timeout in the, uh, in the YAML file or in the console that we discussed earlier. Uh, the uh, logs are uh, 
are are stored and uh, we see metrics we'll talk about metrics uh, uh, shortly and uh, and when the function has finished executing and uh, after a, a, a period of uh, uh, being idle, the container is uh, then removed. Uh, but if the Oracle function service uh, receives another call to the same function before uh, the container gets removed, the second request is routed to the same container. Uh, and uh, if the function's uh, service receives a call to the function that is currently getting executed inside a running container, uh, the service is going to scale horizontally uh, to serve both uh, uh, incoming requests and a second Docker container is started. So the horizontal scaling is taken care of uh, for you. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, when, to, uh, when to remove a container is also managed for you. You don't have to worry about uh, all of that. All right. Uh, the final thing I want to uh, discuss in part two is about function metrics. Uh, there are uh, you know four different uh, useful metrics that are automatically collected uh, from the function service and uh, you can access uh, charts related to these metrics from OCI console uh, you know the useful information is related to the uh, total execution duration of, of your functions in milliseconds uh, and the invocation count of uh, how many times a function got invoked uh, and then there are uh, response-related metrics uh, in terms of uh, the number in errors, uh, the number of times a function has failed, and uh, throttles, which means the number of requests uh, uh, that return uh, a 429 error code of too many requests. All right, so this brings us to the end of uh, part two. Uh, we discuss the core concepts of functions, uh, Oracle function service, which are applications, uh, functions, invocations, and triggers. Uh, we looked uh, under the hood of uh, what happens when you deploy a function with Oracle function service. And we also uh, looked at what happens when you invoke uh, an Oracle uh, function, uh, service-based function. And uh, finally, we looked at uh, the, the metrics uh, that are collected and displayed in OCI console. We actually also looked at the IAM policies you need to use the Oracle function service. Uh, thank you for your time. And I look forward uh, to, uh, to have you join in part three, where we will look at some use cases. And I will give you a, a demo of the Oracle function service in action.